Hi everybody, Paul here again. In this video, I'm going to show how to fix a gas dryer that's no longer drying like it used to. If when you set the timer and push the start button, the drum turns, but it's not drying like it used to, then this video is for you. So stay tuned. Let's first cover some basics about gas dryers. Gas dryers use an open flame to heat the air. A flame not working the way it's supposed to is a very common reason for a dryer not drying the way it should, and that's what I'm going to cover in this video. When a gas dryer is operating at peak performance, it should be able to dry a full load within 45 minutes to one hour. A lot of dryers will have some type of a flame observation opening located on the front cover towards the bottom. As you can see, this dryer has a large door that can manually be open. This can also be removed. If you do not have a flame observation opening, then you'll need to remove the front cover by removing the two screws located at the bottom of the cover here and here. Next tilt the front cover upward which will allow the top clips to release. Carefully set the cover to the side. Be advised that there will still be wires attached to the front cover like you see here. Let's first see how the flame system is supposed to operate. Once the dryer is started, within 15 seconds, the igniter should start glowing bright orange and then shortly afterwards, the flame should turn on. Once the flame turns on, it should stay on continually for approximately 20 to 30 minutes depending on how large and how wet the load is. I'll start the dryer now. After 20 to 30 minutes of the flame staying on continually, the flame should turn off. Immediately after the flame turns off, the flame should go into a cycling mode. This means the flame should turn back on and stay on for approximately 2 to 3 minutes. Then the flame should turn off and stay off for approximately 2 to 3 minutes. This on and off cycling of the flame should continue until the timer turns the dryer off. In order to keep this video as short as possible, I'm not going to show the flame cycling on and off. So if your flame system is not operating the way that I just showed and explained, then something is wrong and needs to be fixed. So let's see what that could be. The number one cause of a dryer not drying is due to the dryer not having the proper airflow due to the buildup of lint and other debris. Without the proper airflow, the air will not properly vent to the outside and the flame will turn off. So the very first thing that you need to do is clean the entire airflow system. This includes cleaning the removable lint screen, the airflow pipes inside and outside the dryer, and the outside air vent. Be sure to remove this cover located below the lint screen to clean the inside airflow pipe. Once the entire airflow system has been thoroughly cleaned and reassembled, turn on the dryer and put your hand up to the outside air vent you should feel a strong continuous stream of air. If the air stream is good, then check the operation of the flame. 
If the flame is still not operating correctly, then check to make sure that the gas valve is turned on all the way and that there's no damage to the gas line. If the flame is still not operating correctly, then you'll need to disconnect the electrical connections to some different components, remove and test them with a digital multimeter. If you do not have a digital multimeter, you can purchase one at any hardware store, auto parts store, big box store, Amazon or eBay. I would strongly recommend that you purchase one that makes a beep sound when it's used on the continuity setting and makes continuity. A continuity test will determine if a continuous electrical path is present. If you're not familiar with a digital multimeter, the continuity setting will usually have an arrow, a plus, and a volume symbol like you see here. Having a set of alligator clips can also make for easier testing with a digital multimeter. Before performing these tests, be sure to first unplug the dryer so that you don't get shocked. The first thing to test is the igniter, which ignites the gas, which is located here. The igniter is also located by the flame cone located here. If the igniter does not turn on, then it will need to be removed and tested. Set the digital multimeter to the 2000 ohms position. Place the two probes from the digital multimeter to the two electrical connections. When performing these tests, it does not matter which colored probe touches which electrical connection. The igniter should read 50 to 400 ohms. If it does not, then it's bad and needs to be replaced. This igniter is good. Next, remove and test the gas valve solenoids, which turn on the gas valve. These are also referred to as gas valve coils, which are located by the flame cone, which are located here on top of the gas valve, which contains two solenoids. You'll need to remove this top plate. You'll notice one solenoid has two electrical connections and the other solenoid has three electrical connections. Set the digital multimeter to 2000 ohms. First place the two probes on the solenoid with the two electrical connections. It should read 1000 to 2000 ohms. If it does not, then it's bad and needs to be replaced. This solenoid is good. With the digital multimeter still set on the 2000 ohms position, Place the two probes on the solenoid with the three electrical connections. Place the probes on the two electrical connections that are closest to one another here and here. It should read 300 to 2000 ohms. If it does not, then it's bad and needs to be replaced. This solenoid is good. Next, remove and test the flame sensor which monitors whether the igniter is hot enough to ignite the gas, which is located by the igniter and on the flame cone here. Set the digital multimeter to the continuity setting. Touch the two probes to the two electrical contacts on the flame sensor, which should read continuity with a beep sound and zero ohms. If there is no continuity, then it's bad and needs to be replaced. This flame sensor is good. Next, remove and test the cycling thermostat, which prevents the air temperature from getting too hot by cycling the flame on and off and is located here on the flame cone. Here's a closer look at the cycling thermostat. The one side will have a metal disc which monitors the air temperature from the flame. On the other side, 
it says L220-40 degrees Fahrenheit. This means the cycling thermostat should turn off once it reaches 220 degrees Fahrenheit and then turn back on once it drops by 40 degrees. Yours may show different temperatures. Place the two probes on the two electrical connections and set it to the lowest ohm setting. At room temperature, it should show some ohms and continuity. Once the cycling thermostat turns off, it should show no ohms and have no continuity. To test it, you'll need an electric griddle or something that you can adjust the temperature with. I'll be using my wife's hair straightener. I'll set the temperature above the shutoff temperature, so I'll set it to 300 degrees Fahrenheit because that's as low as this hair straightener will go. Next, hold the metal disc down on the heated surface. Be careful not to burn yourself. It should eventually show no ohms and no continuity, otherwise it's bad and needs to be replaced. After being on the hair straightener approximately 55 seconds, it turned off. It now shows no ohms and no continuity. So this cycling thermostat is good. Next and last is the timer, which turns electrical contacts off and on inside the timer. When the timer is turned to a specific setting to dry, it should make continuity or a complete circuit, which then allows the flame system to turn on. If any one of the settings to dry does not have continuity, then the timer has gone bad and needs to be replaced in order to restore that specific setting to dry. To test the timer, you'll need to gain access to the back side of the timer. On this particular dryer, I'll remove the screw located here and here. Once the screws have been removed, tilt the top of the control panel towards you and down. Now you can gain access to the back of the timer here. Set the digital multimeter to the continuity setting. Attach one clip to the black wire connection labeled black. Attach the other clip to the red wire connection labeled red. Next, tilt the control panel up so that you can turn the timer. Once you turn the timer to the regular dry setting, you should have continuity until it reaches the off position. Once you turn the timer to the less dry setting, you should have continuity until it reaches the off position. Once you turn the timer to the air fluff setting, you should have continuity until it reaches the off position. This timer has continuity on all settings, so the timer is good. Whenever you replace parts on appliances, always try to use genuine original equipment manufacturer parts, which will usually be of higher quality and last longer. I hope you found this helpful. And if you like this video, please hit the like button below, share it with your friends, and please be sure to subscribe. God bless you and have a great day. Bye for now. Okay, Sparky, wait. <laughs>